Okay. All right. All right, we're starting now, you guys. Um, thank you guys for attending. I'm Easy, and today we're going to be talking about the reservoir. Um, specifically, I want to explain what it's going to take for us as investors in, in reservoir to sustain the price of drip at and above $100, okay? I'm going to talk about that. Um, but before we go there, I want to go ahead and revisit this diagram that you guys are looking at here, which illustrates the 0.1 BNB strategy. I know that there are some misunderstandings with this, so I'm going to go ahead and clarify a few things. We'll do that. And uh, but first, I wrote a short introductory <laughs> um, statement to this video. So let's get into that. All right. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? And can you guys see the uh, the video? Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right. Uh, we all have a common interest, which is to ensure the sustainability and success of DRIP. What's great about DRIP is that we don't need to rely on the tokenomics or code itself as investors, right? We have a feature of DRIP that enables the community to band together and provide the needed capital to maintain a certain price that we are happy with. And that price that we can agree on to have as a price floor is a hundred dollars. And this video serves to determine what we need to do as a community to have a hundred dollar price floor. And of course, the way we can achieve that is through the use of the reservoir. All right. So, um, And also, I want to, before I, I forget, I want to talk about a comment that the, uh, the Black Asian mentioned or brought up yesterday and, uh, in, in my chat for my team. And what he said yesterday was very, very interesting and true. Um, the reservoir, and, and you guys can comment anytime, okay? You guys can step in, comment, ask a question, whatever. This is a, an open form here. The reservoir is there to support drip, right? And the way the reservoir supports drip is through the invested capital of the investors who provide BNB to the reservoir, right? And when you provide that BNB to the reservoir, of course, you're increasing the BNB value or BNB balance and BNB value that gives us market cap that supports the price of drip. So in essence, when, um, if everybody is to um, provide this capital to drip, then we're able to sustain a, a certain price floor for drip, okay? And we're gonna dive into that. But here's the problem. We have 100,000 people in DRIP, right? Or we like to think so, right? That 100,000 could represent 100,000 different people, but at the same time, it can represent uh, 50,000 people who have two wallets, three wallets, okay? Because some people have multiple wallets. So we may not have exactly 100,000 users, but we can say for sure that there's 100,000, 103,000 wallets, right? But we have about 103,000 wallets people invested in DRIP, right? But there's only about three to 4,000 who are liquidity providers in the reservoir. So if we can educate the DRIP community and get them to invest in the reservoir by providing BNB, 
then that will provide a strong um, BNB balance via the drop token to sustain the price for, right? Easily, easily. And we're going to go over the numbers here. But although that sounds simple, it sounds great, and you will think that since we're invested in Fawcett, we're invested in Drip, we believe in the project, that everybody will be on board. However, we don't have everybody in the Drip chat. We don't have everybody invested in the reservoir, although it is the answer to maintain the price floor, okay? So with that said, influencers, right? Influencers promote projects. And these can be new projects. And when they promote these projects, they're onboarding capital for that project at its launch, right? And so, and also into the future later on. There are recent projects that, you know, have launched, right? And these projects are somewhat associated with Drip. And what's interesting about that is some of the influencers who are also part of Drip community promoted this new project or promote new projects, right? And when they promote these projects uh, to include the efforts of the developer and their team, they bring in millions, millions of dollars quick for these projects. And they pump the project. And of course, people start selling at the top. The problem with that is great, you're making money, but the problem with that is why not have the same results or do the same thing for the reservoir? Why is it that we can't raise millions of dollars in, in BNB for the reservoir to provide a solid price floor for drip long term. If we can get these influencers to understand the importance of reservoir and its effect and get them to promote the reservoir the same way they get out here and promote these new projects that have not developed a name for themselves that have not proven that they're sustainable the way Drip has, if we can get these projects or these influencers to promote the reservoir the same way they promote these projects, we can get millions of dollars into the reservoir and create a solid price floor for Drip. So, is it a waste of time for people to put money in these other projects? No, you're making money. But Drip is the platform that's taking care of us, right? There's no better ROI platform out there better than Drip. Drip has proven to be sustainable. So when we put our effort and our capital towards Drip, this platform, the Drip network, can do even more than it is doing for us right now. Okay, so do we, do, we, do we have any comments about that at all? So that's a good comment, um, Black Asian. So I had to had to bring it up. Okay. All right. So now that we talked about that, I want to get into this chart. Okay, now with this chart, the, the misunderstanding, right? The misunderstanding is that this $197 is, would be the price floor of DRID if 
of the 102, 103,000 users bought 0 0.1 BNB and put that in reservoir, right? That's what it looks like here, right? Um, but this is not the price floor. This $197 is not the price floor. And I, and I said that in the video. This $197 is the result of 102,000 users putting BNB into reservoir, right? This is the result. So this would drive the price to $197, but <clears throat> that does not mean that it's going to stay at $197, okay? And the reason it wouldn't stay at $197 is because not all of that BNB is locked. Because when you put BNB in the reservoir, you got your 10% tax, that leaves 90% that you use to buy drip, half of that BNB buys drip, paired to form drop, 45% goes to BNB balance. The other BNB and drip is your drop token, which is in the reservoir. So when you buy this hundred, when these 102,000 users buy BNB or put BNB in the reservoir, uh, this 9,996 BNB, half of this is the drop token, okay? Half of this is a drop token. And not all of this 6.4 thousand drip is drop. There is a percentage in here that's represented by the drop token. And that percentage of drop is what actually contributes to the price floor of drip. So the idea is that after this effort of these users buy the 0 0.1 BNB, that drives the price to $197, right? So now once we're at this point, we're at an all-time high, Reservoir is going to begin to pay those BNB rewards. And as it pays those BNB rewards from its BNB balance, we're going to see the BNB balance drop, which is what we see here, right? BNB balance is going to drop. And the idea is that once it finishes dropping, the percentage that represents that BNB balance as drop is what is going to support the price of drip and form the price floor, okay? And we can see here the drop balance. Once people buy drop, they don't really sell it, right? We see that, it, that, see that it's constantly going up, okay? So our efforts and putting BNB in the reservoir is to put as much BNB as we can, yes. But primarily, we should be looking at increasing the drop balance as much as possible because that drop balance is what is contributing to our price floor, okay? So that's uh, what this is saying here, okay? Now, the question is, how much drop do we need in order to have a $100 price floor, okay? That's the question that we're gonna answer here. Okay. Do I have any, do I have any questions about this uh, diagram here? You guys still there? Any questions about the diagram? Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, you're good. Am I good? Okay. Yep. All right. Now, how much drop and BNB do we need to have a hundred dollar price floor? Okay, and just want to let you guys know that it's going to take some work. Okay, it's going to take some work. Um, what we're going to do to determine the amount of BNB that we that we need 
is we're looking at the uh, the amount of BNB that we would accumulate if 102,000 users bought 0.1 BNB and put that into the reservoir. And that would give us 16.4 thousand BNB because we're adding, we're taking this um, 10.2 thousand BNB, right? And after the 10% tax coming into the reservoir, we're left with 9,996 BNB. And now we're taking this BNB and we're adding this to the 6.5 thousand, which was our floor. And that's what's given us the, uh, the 16.4 thousand, okay? So we're assuming that this 6.5 thousand BNB represents drop for us, right? We're assuming that this represents drop. So let me bring up the chart here. Look like drip is at 60 bucks for a second there. Okay. So we're we're assuming that once the price came down to about $30, right? Around this area, the BNB balance was 6,500. So since we found so much support here, we're assuming that the BNB balance or the drop balance or that this 6,500, most of it is represented by the drop token, okay? So this is where we found our support because of drop, okay? Because of our, our, our lock liquidity in the, um, in the reservoir. Okay, so that's how we got this uh, this sixteen point four thousand, and we're bringing that over here, right? And I pretty much showed you here that uh, this is all of the BNB that we put into reservoir if a hundred percent of users bought the zero point one BNB. But when you think about the mechanics of the reservoir, 40, half of that BNB is used to buy drip and it forms a drop token. So that means that half of this amount here would represent drop, right? And that would give us 4,998. And now that we have the number of drop that should represent uh, half 4,998 BNB, we will add this BNB to the 6,500, which we assume is the BNB or drop that is helping us to create our price floor at around $30, right? And after adding these, this BNB together, okay, that would give us 11.5 or 11,500 BNB. Now, if we let me bring up this calculator, show you guys how I'm actually calculating this. Now, if we go by the BNB price of $414, because that's around where BNB is now, it might be at like 420. But if we go by that BNB pr um, price of 414, okay? And we times that by the price. That gives us 4,761,000, okay? And we divide that by the drip supply of 63,000. And I got the, the drip supply from ratios um, the ratio between the first 
um, drift supply that we had at our first price floor at around seven dollars and the drift supply that we had when, on april 1st at around thirty dollars okay and i got a ratio and i projected that out to where our drift supply would be the next time drip corrects to its floor okay and we divide this by 63,000. Okay, that gives us a $75 price floor. Okay, so what this is saying is that if 102,000 people bought BNB, 0.1 BNB, and put that in reservoir, that will give us a price floor at seventy-five dollars, so we're still short twenty-five bucks. Okay, and I uh, I hope that makes sense. So, also what this means is that we're going to need. Give me one second here. People are walking by. What this means is that we're going to need more B and B in order to achieve that $100 price floor because not all of that BNB that goes into reservoir is locked, right? Because some of that BNB is gonna pay out BNB rewards once we hit the all time high, all right? So how much BNB do we need then to have that $100 price floor, right? So we need an additional 3,000, uh, 3,800, uh, or three, yeah, 3,800, 3.8,000 BNB in order to have a $100 price floor, okay? And I just got, I calculated, I took the data from the, these numbers and that's what I came up with, okay? And when we add that 3.8,000 to 4,998, which is the, the BNB represented by the drop token, and of, keep in mind that this 3.8,000 is drop, okay? That's a drop token. And then we add this to the 4,998, that gives us 8.8,000 BNB, okay? Now we add this 8.8,000 BNB to the 6,500 BNB, which we're assuming is mostly represented by the drop token at that $30 price floor. That gives us 15,300 BNB and represented by the drop token. The value of that is 6.3 million. We divide that by 63,000 drip, and that gives us a $100 price floor. So if 15,300 BNB in the drop token gives us a $100 price floor, how much BNB do we as a community need to put into reservoir in order to have this much drop? Well, this analysis assumes that reservoir functions according to white paper using half BNB to buy drip. So we're assuming that out of all of the BNB that goes into reservoir, half of that is used to buy the drip token to create the drop. And the other half goes into BNB to the drop the BNB balance to pay out BNB rewards. That's our assumption. So if if the reservoir is actually functioning that way, which we believe so, then that would mean that we need twice as much BNB to go into reservoir. So the 100,000 people that bought BNB, that gave us, they would buy 10,000 BNB, okay? And after they buy 10.2 thousand BNB, that would give us a price of $197 immediately after they do it. But once price corrects, right? Once price corrects, 
that will only give us a price floor of $75, okay? So in order for us to have the price floor of $100, we need 30,000 BNB going into the reservoir, which is not hard to achieve because if you divide, bring this up, 30,000 by the total number of users that we have in DRIP, which is 103,000, that would mean that everyone would just need to put in 0 0.29 BNB in the reservoir to achieve this common goal of a hundred dollar price floor. Oh, having some trouble here. Okay. So that's uh, that's what I see that we need just based on these numbers and by the way that the reservoir actually functions. Instead of us, instead of the 100,000 buying 0 0.1 BNB, that'll give us 6.4 thousand BNB. We put that in reservoir and that'll give us a $75 price floor, which is great, right? Um, but if we wanna have a $100 price floor, we're gonna need twice as much, okay? We're gonna need 30,000 BNB in reservoir Half of that which should be locked uh, in the form of, of drop token, which should be locked liquidity and reservoir. It rarely gets sold. And that will give us a price floor of $100 once the, the, um, the price of drip corrects. And in order for us to put that much BNB into the reservoir, everyone in drip right now will only need to buy 0 0.29 BNB. And it doesn't have to be everyone because you're going to have some people who already bought, right? They already bought one, two, three. Some people probably put five BNB. I think somebody put in there uh, like 10 or 30, um, 20 BNB um, here recently. So you're going to have people who put in a lot more than just 0 0.29. But if we were to distribute the effort across every single wallet, not just usable wallet that we have, then it will only require 0 0.29 BNB from every single person to invest into reservoir to create that hundred dollar price floor, so that's what this is uh, is telling us now, and we're and we've already began this uh, this movement towards achieve achieving this. Okay. All right, that's what I have for you guys. Uh, any comments, questions, concerns? Yeah, I, I got a quick question. So I, I understand, you know, the the floor price if everyone puts in like a hundred bucks of B and B in the reservoir. But for me, you know, you know, I need to do more research. What incentivizes people to put more money in the reservoir other than raising the price floor? Like, what's the benefit you get from putting more money in the reservoir? Yeah, this is a uh, this is actually something that we, we were talking about yesterday. Uh, can you mute your um your mic there? No microwave. And originally the you got the noise in the background. Told them to do is to drop the cabinet below this window, mm -hmm. run it all the way okay. to the corner. I think is that is that you? I think that's uh that might be Molly, who has noise in the background. Okay. Um. So what's the incentive for investing in reservoir? Okay. Uh, the incentive is that you have a ROI platform that you have helped to contribute BNB to sustain that ROI platform long term, right? And this platform, this isn't the only incentive, by the way. This platform, as long as it exists, is going to pay you 1% per day from the faucet. 
So your contribution to the reservoir not only ensures that this platform that pays you 1% per day pays you that ROI long term, but through your contribution, you're also increasing the value that that 1% per day represents, right? As you're continuing to compound your faucet and increase your deposit balance. So the way that you're actually benefiting from Reservoir is that you're not benefiting directly from Reservoir as the average investor, but you're benefiting indirectly from what you're putting in there because that's supporting the value that you're getting out of the faucet, right? And when I first started this video, I, I this um, presentation here, I didn't actually record it, but it's important that we look at this uh, at the reservoir as a as a as we're being patriots, right? You're a patriot. You're a long term investor, so you're you're interested in the long term success of Drip because you want that daily ROI of 1% to continue long-term. And the way you do that is via the reservoir, okay? So the first benefit is that, uh, or uh, incentive, is that you, you support and sustain this platform that's paying you 1% per day. The second benefit is that you're increasing the value of that 1% um, that you're getting every single day. Not only at the top of the market, but at the bottom of the market. Now, if we can achieve this $100 price floor, that 1% per day that you're, that you're getting will not fall below $100, okay? Uh, and that's an incredible achievement. The third benefit or incentive of the reservoir is more related to those who have taken advantage of the time weighted aspect of reservoir in which you have the opportunity to increase your percentage share through compounding or by making significant deposits in the reservoir. Because of course, if you have a greater share of the reservoir, then your share of the BNB distribution will be greater. You have the 2% immediate distribution. You have the, um, the 1%, um, the, yeah, you have the 2% daily distribution uh, or, or immediate distribution. And then you have the 2% daily distribution, which comes from the reservoir pool, okay? So if you have a greater share of the reservoir, then of course your share of those BNB rewards will be greater. So that's the incentive. Uh, however, like I said earlier, we don't want to approach the reservoir as a place where we want to earn an ROI, right? That's not how we should approach the reservoir. If you are looking, coming to Drip and you're looking for an ROI, you get that from the faucet. Go to the faucet, increase your deposit balance and earn your 1% daily reward. But when it comes to the reservoir, these are for the drip patriots who see the value of drip and who wanna do their part to support this project so that it'll continue paying that 1% daily reward, right? That is why you get into reservoir. And for that reason, when you look at that drop balance, right? The drop balance here, okay? The drop, when people get into reservoir, they hardly sell, right? is constantly going up. And that's because people are not pulling their drop tokens out of reservoir because these people understand the purpose and intent of the reservoir, which is to support the project. So they leave that capital in there to support drip. And when you feel, when they feel like they wanna get an ROI back, they get that from the, uh, from the faucet. Okay, so that's that's the incentive. And the only way uh, we can get people to approach the reservoir in the correct way is through education. 
And that's why I'm putting so much time into this because I want people to understand that the reservoir serves a different purpose than the faucet. If you want an ROI, go to the faucet, increase your deposit balance, okay? As much as you can by compounding and redeposits. But once you understand the project, right? And you get educated, you come to the reservoir chat, you start asking questions, people answer you. You start watching videos on the reservoir, okay? Now you start, you're, you're, you're collecting your 1% and now you start looking at the reservoir. And now you wanna support this platform because now you understand how it actually works and what you can do to contribute to the long-term sustainability of Drip. And what I wanna do now, I wanna reread the statement that I opened up with, okay? Um, just to, to finish with answering this question, we all have a common interest, which is to ensure the sustainability and success of Drip. What's great about Drip <clears throat> is that we don't need to rely on tokenomics or code itself. We have a feature of Drip that enables the community to band together and provide the needed capital to maintain a certain price that we are happy with. And that price is $100. So our common interest is that DRIP is successful and we don't have to rely on um, Forex and this team. We don't have to rely on just the code being perfect and great or the tokenomics. We as a community are enabled via the reservoir to provide that support and help with the sustainability of drip. We can do that via the reservoir and that's what it's there for, okay? I hope that answered your question. That was outstanding, thank you very much. That was a very detailed response and it really cleared things up, really appreciate that. Great, great, great. Okay, any questions about um, the $100 price floor, the charts, the diagrams. Um, I know the video is pretty long. So um, some of you guys may not have been able to watch it in its entirety and may have missed certain parts in the video. If you have any questions about, about the video or in the reservoir, um, please, please ask. Okay, so now, I want to go back to um, to Black Asian's comment because we didn't have many people in the chat when I talked about his his comment as well. Um, yesterday I had a chat um, with my team in the Black Asian joint, and uh, he made a very interesting comment about the reservoir. And there's a lot of influencers, right, who get new projects, right? New projects are coming out, and they promote those projects to their community, right? To their subscribers. And when they do the, these promotions, they're able to bring in millions of dollars to these projects that launch, right? Millions of dollars to these projects, right? And these, some of these influencers are part of DRIP, part of the DRIP community. And of course their followers are also a part of DRIP. So, but when it comes to the reservoir, we have 100,000 users, but only 3,000 in the reservoir, right? So if we can get some of these influencers who have thousands and thousands of, of followers to promote the reservoir, the way they promote some of these pump and dumps, these projects that, that turn into pump and dumps, instead of these, the people invested in drip putting their money into these pump and dumps, they can take that money and put it into the reservoir, right? So instead of you trying to make extra money from these other projects, we can put money into the reservoir so that we can maximize the benefit that we can get out of drip. Think about it. If all, if those millions of dollars that went to these pump and dumps into these, all these other projects went to the reservoir, instead of us being upset about a $30 price floor, 
and in trying to make extra money from these other projects, we can all band together, put all that money into reservoir, create a hundred dollar price floor. And once we have a hundred dollar price floor, we're not worried about these pump and dumps. We have a project that has a hundred dollar price floor. And if you look at the drop token, once that BNB gets in there, it doesn't leave. Or once that drop gets in there, it stays. And what's even better about that is now we have a platform and more people who are educated about reservoir. So this can continue. This upward trend, this uptrend of the drop token can continue. And we can continue to educate people to ensure that it continues. And if, we, if that drop token continues to be locked in reservoir, we're also simultaneously uh, ensuring a $100 price floor for DRIP if we're able to achieve this 30,000 BNB invested into the reservoir. Okay. So um, I wanna talk about one last thing and I, I may include this in a future video and this may be the last thing that I present to all of you. Um, but, and let me make sure I'm still recording here. I promised Kanji that I would because of his, uh, the time zone that he's in, he wasn't able to make it. Um, but the, I wanna talk about the idea of a dynamic decentralized supply control algorithm, okay? And this algorithm is used by Forex for the animal farm, right? And what this algorithm does is that it enables the animal farm platform to control the supply side of price appreciation, right? So the governance token and the farming token, they're minted to, to pay out rewards, right? And when you mint these tokens, and before I go there, the way that you control price through supply and demand, right? Supply and demand. So if you control supply and you control demand, you can control the price of a token, right? So Forex created this algorithm to control the price of the pigs and the dogs token. That's what we have the decentralized or dynamic decentralized supply control algorithm, right? And the way it works, it helps the project or platform control the supply side of price appreciation, right? The demand is controlled by being a first mover, right? Animal Farm being a first mover, having a lot of new features and utilities, the marketing, tokenomics, the investors who promote and market the team building system. This controls the demand side of price appreciation, right? And the community has a, plays a large role in that, right? So that's demand. But when it comes to supply, Forex created in the team, created the decentralized or dynamic decentralized supply control algorithm. And what happens is the, the, there's emission rates, right? And the emission is when these tokens are being minted to pay rewards. And when the, when the demand is there, right? When the demand is there, the emission, this algorithm actually um, causes the emission rate to be 25% above PEG, right? And it pays out, uh, it emi the emission rate is higher to pay out rewards to the people in Animal Farm, right? Because the demand is there. But when the demand is not there and the price begins to drop or correct about 25, 50%, then this algorithm, which functions by itself, does a developer doesn't put in any data to make it do it. It drops the emission rate by 25% because the demand isn't there. That way, while there's no demand, the platform doesn't continue to mint tokens, further diluting the supply of drip or supply of the token and devaluing the token at the same time. So while the demand is not there, the emission rate drops, right? Um, to ensure, um, to help not dilute the supply of the token and help to try to sustain the price of the token. So that's how this algorithm works, 
okay? And this is what Forex uses to control the supply and demand of price appreciation for the governance and farming token dogs and pigs for Animal Farm. Now, how, what, how does this apply to Reservoir or relate to Reservoir? The way that we're, we control the demand side uh, for, uh, for DRIP is, of course, through team building, through the utility of, uh, of DRIP, the idea of, of DRIP just being very sustainable, right? We're controlling the demand side. But the supply side, uh, the way that we're controlling the DRIP token is through the tax structure, right? We're constantly removing drip from circulation through the tax structure. But another way, okay, the, so drip itself can't control the supply side, right? By being a de deflationary ROI platform. But us as a community, we can control the supply side as well. And the way we can control the supply side is through the reservoir. And the way we do it is by putting BNB in reservoir. And when you put the BNB in reservoir, you're buying drip, right? Half of that BNB buys drip and you're locking it in the reservoir in the form of the drop token. So now we're doing our part to control the supply side of price appreciation. And this is why I like to say that that drip is simple, but it's simple genius. Very few things on drip, but it's perfect. And it has all the tools that we need to make it sustainable. And we can do it as a community. Okay. That was the last thing that I have for you guys. I don't want to make it too long. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's already been an hour. So uh, you guys know that I can talk. All my videos recently have been one hour long. <laughs> so uh, at least. So uh, if you guys have anything, any more questions, any comments, concerns, anything that you want to add about the reservoir that can help the community in terms of education and what we can do to do our part to support Drip, please um, go ahead and jump in. Hey man, I'm sorry, I jumped in late, but um, when can you compound? If you could slow that down for us, like when can you compound and how much minimum BNB you gotta have in there? Uh, I don't think there's a minimum. I, I'm not, I don't think there's a minimum, but the thing is, uh, I'm not too sure exactly uh, about the compounding and everything, but when you, it, it takes, if you have a small amount of BNB in the reservoir, it's going to take you a while before you build up enough to where you actually see an amount in your available. Okay. And my recommendation is that if you want to try to compound as much as possible to take advantage of the time weighted benefit of reservoir, as soon as you see an available balance in the reservoir, from that point, you want to compound. That's what I did. You know, I whenever I see, when I when I saw that I have a, a available balance, I compounded, right? And of course, as we're investing in reservoir over time, we'll get better. We'll learn more. And of course, I'm going to share what I learned from it. But from my experience, when I saw that there was an available, available balance there, because I don't have a large share, I just went ahead and compounded that. There's is not like piggy bank um, before when you had to have a certain amount of truffles and then you're able to compound. It's not like that. OK, uh, that kind of removes or is kind of productive to what we're trying to accomplish here. Right. Just the same way that that truffles having two million something truffles to compound. That was kind of productive to piggy bank because you weren't capitalizing on, um, you know, growing your account exponentially and capitalizing on the bonus rewards. So the same thing applies to reservoir. It doesn't restrict you from compounding. We want you to compound as much as possible. So as soon as you see an available balance, you should be able to compound it. And I recommend you do so. And if you don't have a large share, what I always tell my team, you want to compound, but you also want to 
do redeposits as well. Compound and redeposits will increase your, um, your uh, accounts a lot faster than just totally relying on compounds. Thank you very much, sir. That's perfect. Okay, awesome. Okay. All right, you guys, it's, uh, it's been an hour. If I don't have any, any more questions here, then um, let's go ahead and end it. So thank you guys for attending. Um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Keep spreading the word. I'm going to keep creating content. I saw that um, there's a YouTuber who created a video about me, about the, the last video that I made, and he was very impressed. So the word is getting around. And uh, I hope more people within our community, our influencers, our YouTubers, um, get out there more and start creating videos on the reservoir to get the word out. Because now we can, we're can beginning to understand the impact and the effect that reservoir could have on our investment. And that reservoir is our tool to control the price appreciation and do our part to support drip overall. All right, you guys. Thank you for hey, your time. Man, can I ask a question? Yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, we were debating yesterday about who is better in supporting the price of drip. If it's uh, BNB drip or if it's uh, BUSD drip, which one is the best? What, which one do you think is the best to support price drip? Um, well, you guys, you guys know the idea of uh, the sword and the shield, okay? Um, of course, BUSD supports the price of drip because you remove the volatility of BNB, right? So that way, uh, you know, BNB is not affecting the price of drip, right? Um, so it's so that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing for pancake swap. But then we have um, drip, right? We have drip, but the drip website, that liquidity pool, but our on the website, that drip is paired to BNB, right? So, and we we are um, exposed to the volatility of the BNB price, right? So it is in our interest to try to have as much BNB in our BNB balance as possible, because that way we don't feel the effect of that BNB, uh, the volatility of the BNB price. So we're going to have some drip pegged to BNB, right? But with drip being pegged to BUSD, that's great. So when you think about it and you look at the contracts, the holders contracts for drip, it's about half and half, right? We have half of the, uh, the drip uh, in BNB, right? And then we have the other half uh, of drip that's, uh, you know, paired to BUSD. So I can't say that the pairing to BUSD is better uh, or B, the pairing to BNB is better. I can't really tell you exactly which one. Um, it, it is great to have a stable coin paired to BNB but, or paired to BUSD, but with the pairing to BNB, we have the reservoir, right? We don't have reservoir with uh, Animal Farm and the pairing to B, BUSD, but we have that with uh with drip or the pairing to b and b we have the reservoir all right so uh i don't i can't really say which one's better but they both have their benefits okay they are the benefits because with the busd pairing we can't benefit from the price appreciation of b and b but we can benefit from the price appreciation of b and b that's paired with the drip that's paired to b and b right so in order, the best approach to this, I guess the best answer would be, we have had a drip here to BUSD. That's great. It provides stability to drip. So that's our shield, right? But then we have drip paired to BNB. So now we're able to capitalize on the price appreciation of BNB. But since there is still volatility of BNB, it's in our best interest to use the reservoir to try our best to increase the BNB balance. That way, when the BNB price does drop, we have enough BNB in there to sustain a decent price floor. 
So both have their benefits, both have their benefits um, at different times of the market, right? So I guess that's the best answer I can give you. Yes, thank you so much. That was a great, great answer. Thank you. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, anything else? All right, you guys. Um, thank you guys for attending. This is easy. Um, I'll be in the chat room. Um, you know, keep keep it up. Keep spreading the word on Reservoir. You guys are doing great. All right, I'm out. Thank you. Right, Take it easy. Thank you. Keep right. up the good work. Okay, appreciate it. Appreciate it.